So we want to talk about uh, why downtime isn't always black and white. You know, there's, there's issues uh, with downtime. It isn't enough to capture a complete picture of your shop floor. And here we have five examples that uh, try to illustrate that point. You know, number one, there's more to it than just downtime. There's operator issues, part shortages, tooling adjustments, quality issues. Downtime may not really be downtime. So you can have concurrent faults, uh, erroneous faults, missing faults, where one machine will have downtime and trip other machines, sending them into fault mode. Uh, not all downtime is created equal. One of the complexities of the uh, um, workshop we ran was some of the downtime was protected by buffers and other downtime isn't. So there's no change in production because uh, downtime was isolated via buffers and we'll talk a little bit about that on an upcoming slide. There's different degrees of downtime. One 20 minute downtime interval is it equal to 21 minute downtime occurrences? Sometimes. Uh, firefighting, we always remember the two hour downtime but do we remember the 121 minute downtimes? So we're gonna illustrate each of these hopefully uh, with these slides. Problem number one, there's more to it than just downtime. You know, in this report, the minutes of downtime for each operation on the line are being uh, measured for one week, week 45. And it's clear from the report that you can see operation 220 had the most significant uh, downtime. But when we start to look at other factors on the shop floor, for in instance, operator uh, impact during the same period, we can see that there's a change in the priorities. So here's an example when uh, operator load issues are added to the problem, OP 230 is now fourth on the list. And the number one issue becomes operation 235A. Addressing that particular operation would have a much greater impact. And this particular slide could have shown things like uh, speed losses, manual part speed issues, changeovers. So it's one of the issues when looking at downtime as the sole metric of, of performance in a system. Problem number two, downtime may not really be downtime. This is getting at the concurrent fault issue. When one machine goes down, it could cause others before or after in the process to fault. And uh, if you're measuring a machine's inability to perform its function as downtime and ignoring the external causes, then you can end up uh, counting downtime that isn't really technically downtime. Accurately accounting for concurrent faults and attributing those faults to the right machine becomes key in this case. If starved for parts uh, downstream or blocked upstream, then it's not uh, a penalty on the performance of that station. We can see here that the sum of the downtime is 2,297 minutes, yet the available shift time is 1,500 minutes. So this line is making parts. Obviously, uh, you know, we have an issue with just the total downtime on that particular line. Not all downtime is created equal. Buffers in a, a process can isolate and allow a segment of a line to catch up. So not all measurements that appear to indicate downtime are going to negatively impact the production at the end of the line. If a, a segment appears in a top 10 downtime list, someone's going to be responsible for going out there and addressing it. And uh, in this example, you can see that the subassembly had 20 minutes of downtime and uh, there was a 50 part buffer isolating it from the main line. And in reality, that subassembly was able to catch up it was able to undercycle, replenish the buffer without ever impacting the main line. So the 11 lost pieces off the end of the line weren't, uh, uh, had nothing to do with the subassembly. <clears throat> Based on the typical use of a downtime report, somebody probably would have been responsible for addressing uh, this issue on the subassembly and would spend time and effort with no actual change in the output of the system. You know, it's station one in this case that had the largest impact and, and uh, would have uh, resulted in more parts off the end of the line. Degrees of downtime. You know, every day uh, a plant experiences a variety of conditions that will affect the output. You know, separating your chronic issues from your catastrophic issues is part of the puzzle. The chronic issues are those that happen very regularly, usually less of an impact and they're the minor stoppages that can add up to many, many hours over time. And we've actually seen this at a number of customers, uh, typically tracking downtime, where they'll do the major events or the, the events um, 
worthy of entering information about, which tend to be the less frequent, larger duration downtimes, and they're missing the minor stoppages per cycle, for example. So again, using the top 10 downtime list uh, to evaluate chronic and, and unexpected issues on an equal basis can, can be misleading. Um, more accurate view would be a steady state, 30 to 60 days of production and isolating the chronic issues and, and filtering out some of the others. And we're gonna touch on that in an upcoming slide. <clears throat> so you can see here uh, on this slide, that using this customer's downtime report, we had 890 minutes of lost downtime for station two, but looking at station uh, one, we experienced 1,224 minutes due to many smaller stoppages. Now, because these, these stoppages were less than, um, I think about a minute in duration, they weren't uh, recorded and they didn't show up in the top 10 downtime list. But you can see that 1,224 minutes of downtime on what is a regular basis, day after day after day, is adding up to much more of an impact than the major faults that were being tracked on the previous slide. And our last point is uh, the firefighting approach. You know, in an effort to use top 10 list, um, many, many manufacturers will direct their maintenance staff to work on top issues from the previous day or the previous uh, week. It seems reasonable, but it can be pretty overwhelming you know, some issues require longer term fixes. Um, maintenance can fall farther and, and farther behind in that case. And other problems simply drop off the list as new surface issues. So it becomes the uh, firefighting hot priority issue. And when the unexpected catastrophic issues happen, then you, you have to jump in and deal with those right away. So they can distract from those chronic issues that can eat away at your production. This report shows, uh, again, week 45, um, Based on the results, we'd probably be looking here at station three, and this, is sta this station appears more than once uh, with the load lift stop home fault as well as rollers to conveyor home fault, double dowel uh, in ram faults. So uh, at station three was a problem. We jump on that and uh, then perhaps we'd go on to station two and then station 10 would be next because they had multiple stoppages. And if station three were to take many weeks to fix, the faults that are still on the list might roll over into next week, and then we end up with a snowball effect in our top 10 list of things to fix. So downtime's a very good indicator. It's part of the tool set that's needed to be able to improve efficiencies, but as the sole source of how to direct efforts, it can often be misleading. Those are examples. Uh, sometimes they directly apply to a facility and, and we've seen that data at customers. Um, other times, downtime is a very good indicator in your facility. 